Hi, this is Mac Thornberry. Welcome to another edition of our video mailbox. This week, Wendell from Gainesville writes in, Stop the Clean Water Act. The EPA is going after my backyard. I bought my land and should be able to do what I want with it. The EPA is killing jobs in the coal industry and the oil industry with all their regulations. They act as if they're paying as if they are paying my taxes, and I assure you they're not. Most people want to do what's best for their land. Please help private home and landowners protect their rights. Well, Wendell, I agree. Uh, the EPA is uh, pushing regulations at every turn. Some of these regulations, as you said, are really going after the oil and gas industry and the coal industry. Just when our, we are developing more energy here at home, they're trying to slow down the growth of American ener energy industry, and that's wrong. But I am also concerned about what they're doing to private property rights throughout this country. Of course, a lot of attention goes to farmers and ranchers, people in the construction business, but I think you're right to be worried about your backyard. Here, here's just one example. Recently, the EPA came out with some new regulations where they propose to regulate water Navig what they what is in the in the statute as navigable water, but they would define that as just about any place water ever stands, like the Bardich or or the low place out in in the field behind your house. I introduced legislation last fall to specifically define navigable water, which for the first time would limit clearly what EPA was authorized to regulate. So part of this, I think, is Congress being clear about the legislation it passed. Part of it is our restricting funds for EPA to try to limit the things that they get into. But what we really need is some different folks driving the train at the EPA who are more concerned just about protecting health and safety and less about regulating the whole country. James from Burke Burnett writes in that I'm deeply concerned with President Obama and Defense Secretary Hagel's 2015 military budget that cuts our military to pre-World War II strength. The United States was not ready for World War II because we were an isolationist nation with a very small, ill-prepared military. I don't want to relive the pre-World War II mistakes. Well, James, I think the first job of the federal government is to defend the country. And I completely agree that, especially in this day and time, we cannot become isolationist and, and because the rest of the world uh, is not going to let us do it. We, the world is too integrated now. What happens in other places affects us. And we saw on 9-11 that what happens in the rest of the world can come here to affect us when, and, and actually kill thousands of Americans in that case. I worry about the defense budget too. I guess the good news is this year it's the overall budget number is not going down like it would have if we had not had the budget agreement last December. But the trends are very troubling and so I completely agree we're going to have to reorder federal priorities to make sure that defense comes first. And that I'm still working on a number of defense reforms to make sure we get more defense out of the money we spend and because we need to keep working on that. But bottom line is the first dollar of taxes needs to go to protect the country and, and, and whatever it takes, especially in a world that is more and more dangerous, more and more complex as we see from the news every day. I appreciate again everyone sending in their emails, their letters, their calls. All of that helps me do my job better. We'll look forward to seeing you again on another video mailbox.